First off, let's get everyone up to speed who hasn't been following your career. What are you doing now? Where are you at? Uh, yeah, so I graduated from UCLA two years ago. Um, had a pretty decent career there. And then last two years, I've been in Oklahoma City. Uh, I played uh, with the Thunder for training camp for both years. Uh, so I've been on a uh, training camp contract for two years now with them and just been on their G League team, the Oklahoma City Blue. And um, had a really good year last year, led the G League in three-pointers made last year. And um, having another good year this year, our, our team's winning our division, so it's been good, been a good two years. What's it been like, the pro experience for you? Well, it's a different game, you know, obviously you go from high school to college and it's a whole different speed, whole different game, but um, learning the pro style game is a completely different deal. Obviously the three-point line moves back, um, which is what I do, uh, so that was a, a that was a adjustment, but um, just the travel and um, not having school and uh, it, basketball is literally all you do, so um, it's kind of nice. You mentioned, in passing, had a pretty good career at UCLA. I'd say it's a little better than a pretty good career. Top five scoring all time at an establishment and a program like that. What was that whole experience like, playing not only at a school like UCLA, but playing for your dad those four years? Yeah, I mean, it was awesome. I wouldn't trade those, for, those years for anything. Um, there were ups and downs for sure, obviously. Um, being at a school like that, there's a ton of pressure, and then playing for your dad in, in the city of L.A., and uh, every time you play a home game, you got 11 national title banners above you. It's, there's a lot that goes into that, that experience, but um, it definitely shaped me for the rest of my career, and uh, it'll be memories that me, my brother, and my dad will have forever. Was it tough for you being the son of the coach and hearing the outside noise that would come and go during his time there? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely, you know, uh, my first two years being still young, um, I still had to kind of learn to kind of cancel those voices out and just, you know, keep my head down and just play uh, and, and listen to the voices that matter. But once I figured that out, you know, and, and I stopped listening to all that outside noise, uh, it wasn't too bad. Uh, obviously, I still you know, you're going to hear it, social media, you're going to hear it, you're going to see stuff, you can't avoid it. But um, once you learn the importance and non-importance of that stuff, it's not too bad. How tough was it this last year then hearing that the school wanted to cut ties with your dad? Yeah, that was tough. Um, obviously, um, anytime a coach gets fired in the middle of the year, that's, it's not easy on uh, the staff or, um, you know, their families or even the players on the team, you know, so I felt for the whole uh, program. And uh, my brother's still on staff, so it's kind of a an awkward deal you know he's got to finish out the year and um, but you know my family's been so great about it my dad's been awesome he's he's uh he's the head of our house and you know he's he's always set an example and uh, it just wasn't a fit for him you know he had a he had a rough year this year and um, he's gonna move forward and hopefully him and Corey can both continue to move forward I ask any of the athletes I talk to I believe everyone has a story if I were writing a story about Bryce Alford, what would the title of that story be? What would the name of the movie or the name of the book be? Um, hopefully unfinished. Um, I'd like to say that my story is not done. Um, hopefully I got a lot of years left to play and um, being in the G League right now, I'm trying to make that next step. Um, it's a very competitive league. There's a ton of great talent. Um, if you ask just about anybody, I bet you they'd say, the top players in the G League and the bottom players of the NBA are pretty much interchangeable. Uh, it's just about opportunity and um, circumstance. And so hopefully I'm lucky enough to, to get one of those opportunities. And if not, you know, maybe I go overseas and have a great career over there. But um, God willing, I just have a long basketball career ahead of me. So I, I hope that uh, my career is unfinished. You had a stellar high school career here in the state of New Mexico. I want to ask you about playing at La Cueva. When you came into a program, you're kind of the new kid on the block trying to establish yourself. Do you remember that first day uh, at La Cueva or in the basketball gym? Well, my brother was already there, and he had been there for two years, so I was kind of known as Corey's old brother when I got there. And um, I think quickly I started to like make my name for myself once basketball season started, and uh, everything becomes more comfortable once, once you get to the basketball season just because that's where I was comfortable and uh, where I had my confidence and stuff like that. So... Um, Again, when you go from middle school to high school, anytime you change, um, it's always an adjustment. And um, but you know, I love my four years of La Cueva. I met some of my best friends I'll have for life uh, at that school. So um, it was awesome. You have all kinds of records: single season scoring record, three point records. Do you have a favorite memory or a game or anything that stands out when you look back on your time at La Cueva? 
Uh, there's so many. Um, there's so many, but um, obviously my senior year was special. Um, just that whole year, uh, I had four of my best friends on that team. Um, and, you know, we weren't really picked to do anything that year. We kind of lost a lot of guys. Kai Loxley leaves um, with his dad, and um, so we weren't really picked to have that good of a year. And we ended up having a really good year. And um, it, it's weird. It turns out all four years I either won a state championship or I lost to the team who ended up winning it. So... Um, but yeah, my, probably my entire senior year as a whole was probably my favorite memory. Your senior year, I remember your last game at the pit uh, against Las Cruces, I believe. How tough was that walking off that floor knowing that was the end of the high school career and you didn't make it that season, your final one to the final? Well, that was probably the only time I've cried after a game. Uh, that and then my, my last game at um, UCLA when we lost to Kentucky. Um, it was just tough because we didn't expect to go out that early. and. Um, I felt like I didn't have my best game that day and um, obviously now looking back uh, at the time I wasn't thinking about it but looking back uh, I could have made some more special um, records and moments that year if we would have just won a couple more so um, that one always have a kind of a tough spot in my heart but um, it was a fun year as a whole so it wasn't too bad. Do you ever look back and feel like you missed an opportunity to play at the pit as a collegiate basketball player? Absolutely. Um, well, I talked to my buddy Nate about it. He came out to and did college with me out in, in um, L.A. for three years. And uh, we always talked about what it would have been like if I would have stayed here. And um, I probably I don't regret, you know, going to UCLA. It's, it, it helped me with my basketball career and get the exposure I needed that um, unfortunately there isn't here as much. Um, but I do think about playing in the pit. I think about what it would have been like to kind of be the hometown kid and um, have those people that loved watching me in high school um, let me play for their, their college team. and um, This is a special place for basketball, so I, I definitely think about that all the time. What were those battles like with Cullen, and do you still keep in touch with him? Yeah, I talked to Cullen quite a bit. Um, it's funny, I actually, uh, my birthday was January 18th, and I got engaged on the, on the 19th, and I think he got engaged on the 20th, so... Uh, Didn't plan it that way, did you? No, no, but I beat him, so, you know, I beat him to it. So, you know, there's always been kind of a battle between the two of us, and uh, it's always been friendly. There's been, you know, stories back and forth, and uh, but I still talk to him. He's having a good year overseas right now, and I wish the best for him, but uh, those battles in high school are, are wild. You mentioned your affinity for Albuquerque and, and a special place in your heart, and you're coming back this summer. Tell me a little bit about what you have planned and, and why. Why come back? Yeah, so, you know, I, I grew up going to my dad's basketball camps my whole life, um, playing in it uh, for as many years as I can remember, and then, you know, becoming a counselor. And uh, basketball camps have always had a special place in my heart just because um, of I, I love being around kids and, you know, s seeing how much they enjoy the game and, and just kind of I love to teach. And um, I know that there's a need for it here, and uh, I think I can bring – a really good basketball camp here that I can do every year and this will be the first year of it. Um, in the last week of July I'm going to hold a basketball camp um, for fourth grade through ninth grade at La Cueva um, and we're hoping just to grow it every year. I'm going to have some big time counselors here, guys who have played at the high school level, at the college level, professional level. Um, you know, I think my grandpa is going to come down and help me run it and obviously he knows more about the camp scene than I do but um, that's going to be awesome and then I'm also going to have uh, charitable golf outing with Make-A-Wish Foundation, um, which I'm really excited about to get involved with them, and hopefully we can, you know, raise the money for a good cause. If people want to get involved with the camp or the golf event, where do they go? What do they do? Yeah, so we have a uh, camp website. Um, it's uh, BryceAlfordBasketballCamp.com. Uh, I got all my stuff on my social media, links in my bio and all that, so uh, it's pretty easy to find, easy to register, all that, but uh, right now we're just trying to find kids that, that want to come and you know have a good time and uh, for the golf outing um, we're still working on getting all the details together for that but that'll be on my website as well and uh, but yeah I'm really excited for the summer. You mentioned unfinished as the title of your story. What's next for you? What, what's the next chapter on this unfinished story? Well continuing to play, continuing to um, you know move forward with my basketball career but uh, as I've gotten older, I've just found out that there's more, um, you know, I want more to my story than just being on the court. And so um, that's part of what I wanted to start this year of, you know, starting to um, give back to the community. And obviously, like you said, I have this place as a special place um, in my heart. It's kind of where I found who I was as a player and as a person. So um, people love the game of basketball here, and I want to try to give them uh, a really good basketball camp. And then 
Um, I've always had a heart for, you know, giving back to charity. You know, my mom and dad instilled that in me. They still give back to Special Olympics here in, in New Mexico every year. And um, so with, with Make-A-Wish Foundation, hopefully I can make an impact there and, you know, raise some money for people. You feel like you have what it takes to get to the NBA, get to that next level? Absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like I've been, you know, knocking on the door for two years now. And um, like I said, it's circumstance, it's, it's opportunity, and not everybody gets that chance. Hopefully I do, but, you know, if I don't, uh, I'll be happy with the fact that, you know, I put everything I can into the game. And um, wherever I end up, I know I'll, I'll do well. Everywhere I've been, I've done well, and I've worked hard and succeeded where I've been. So hopefully I get that chance.